Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we all shall rejoice and be glad. And this is Katie Santa, associate pastor, motivational speaker here in the Metro Detroit area. And I am so blessed today that you have chosen to watch another episode of KD's Inspire, an opportunity to share the real word with real people, dealing with real seasons in our lives. And today we are going to go into a brief word titled, You Are Not a Loser, You Are a Winner. You are not a loser, you are a winner. You can make that personal. I am not a loser. I am a winner. In this society today and in this season, there are so many people dealing with the spirit of defeat. They think they have been defeated by various things that they've encountered in their life. But we as believers must tap back into the word of God and know that everything that we're experiencing, according to Romans 8, 28, that everything that we are experiencing, hey, we still won. There's a message inside of the situation that we're in. And we're going to talk about that today on Katie's Inspire. So stay tuned. For the message that I have for you today, you are not a loser, you are a winner. Stay tuned. Hey, praise the Lord, everybody. I'm telling you, every time I see that opening, I just go into a praise. I'm telling you, make you want to have church wherever you are. God bless each and every one of you. And thank you for watching another episode of KD's Inspire. Let me first say, let me give a shout out to Genesis Church with Pastor William Bell here in Pontiac, Michigan on Lapeer Road. Um, Friday night, they had a dynamic, phenomenal, outstanding, amazing prayer service. I mean, it was amazing. Uh, Pastor Davis and his wife, Pastor Davis, co-pastor Davis, um, was uh, from Gen um, from Saints Tabernacle, I'm sorry, in Detroit, Michigan, um, was also in attendance. I'm telling you, the Spirit of the Lord moved. When we all come together and pray, God moves in a mighty, mighty, mighty way. And I'm telling you, it was just, um, there was just a cloud of healing, a cloud of restoration that was in the place. So thank you, Pastor Bill, for having me be a part of such a dynamic move and dynamic ministry. And greater things are coming to your church. I want you to declare that into your spirit, into your members. Greater things are coming to your church because you're bringing prayer. You're bringing what God has requested. No more entertainment, no more theatrics, but prayer and worship and word and praise. These are some of the four of the main components that God is looking for back in the church. So, amen. Just want to take a moment. You know, we are supposed to support each other in ministry. You all know that, right? Amen. You're all supposed to support our brothers and sisters in ministry, amen, and God will bless you. So with that said, today we're going to talk about, real briefly, the title, You Are Not a Loser, You Are a Winner, okay? And the reason why God placed it in my heart, because I had a conversation with someone this week, and I just asked them one simple question, how are you doing today? And they began to talk about all of the things that they were experiencing, financial situations, um, health situations, and they began to go down the list, and I just kind of listened to them. And then when I look at their face, they had such a face of defeat like it's done and it's over. And my heart began to get heavy because this individual is a believer. They're a strong believer, but I think that the situations overwhelmed them to the point where they stepped out of that, um, of that place of victory. And, and the circumstances that they were physically seeing blinded them from the spiritual revelation that God was trying to show them. So we immediately began to pray, and I told them this very same statement that you are not a loser, you are a winner. And I kept repeating that over and over again because it's the power of what we hear in our ears and go into our spirits. We cannot allow what we see in the physical to distract what God is doing in the spiritual, amen? So this individual, as we begin to pray, and I, I even asked them to pray, and as they begin to pray, the heaviness came off of them, and I mean, they began to declare and decree that they are a winner, and no matter what they're experiencing, that God is still moving, and they were able to look beyond the bad situation that they thought they were in, and say that God is still working. Well, I just got a phone call last night from that individual, amen, and they gave me a praise report beyond expectation, amen, that God came through in their finances, God came through in their home situation, and they got a brand new job. I'm telling you, we serve a God that is awesome. So when you are in a situation where you feel defeated, I need you to connect with your brothers and sisters, amen. If you can go to the mall with them, if you all can go to parties with them, if you can go and hang out with them, but you can't pray with them and you can't ask them to pray with you, then you may need to choose some true, some different friends, amen. I don't need anybody in my circle that's going to allow me to stay in a state of defeat, amen, but you can't touch and agree with me when I'm in a heavy state in my life. And brothers and sisters, let me tell you this, even as Christians, as believers, amen, we all have our days 
when heaviness begins to take over. Don't think that you're so anointed and that you're so powerful and that you're so called that you don't have a bad day. We are going to have bad days. We're going to have challenging days. And those are the days where you connect with somebody to say, hey, can you touch and agree with me on my present situation? Because I don't want to walk around with this heaviness. And the power of prayer when you pray, God allows you and reminds you that you are a winner in spite of what you're experiencing inside of your life. Well, let me give you a scripture that um, really supports this. Amen. One of my favorite scriptures in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. A lot of you all probably say, oh, I know that scripture. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. One of my favorite passages of scripture that, that I use to remind me when I'm looking at stuff, and even myself, when so much is going on, I say, God, I need a word that's going to let me know that you are giving me a message in the mess. Uh-oh, that's a sermon right there, preachers, that the Lord has given me a message in my mess. Hallelujah. Uh, Romans 8, 28. I better stop because I'm going to start preaching that. Uh, Romans 8, 28, it says, and it's right on your screen, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called, who are called according to his purpose. All right, let's read that again. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Amen. I know you all have heard the song. I'm not going to try to sing it. Amen. I'm going to leave that up to the artist. But all things work together for the good. A lot of people say, oh, that, that just came out. If you're in your scripture, amen, that's why I thank God for that song because it's scripture. I love gospel that accords that accord to scripture. Amen. So, so what we're looking at real quickly is that we know that all things work together. Every single thing that you're experiencing in your life, whether it be good, and I'm not going to say bad, but I'm going to say challenging, amen, that God has a way of turning things around to let you see that I'm not taking you through this to destroy you. I'm not taking you through this to make you think that it's over. But I allow you to go through things because I'm going to give you a message inside of your mess. Oh, there we go again. I may have to put that as a sermon note, amen. But God has a way of letting you see that you are not defeated in what you are going through. That as long as you have God in your life, and as long as you're walking in righteousness, as long as you are walking in obedience and walking in his word, God has a way of showing you that no matter what you are going through, God is going to turn that thing around to remind you that you are not defeated. I want you to tell yourself that I am not defeated, okay? And says that Works together for good to them, to them that love God. Amen. You got to, those who love God, not just loving God with your lips, not just loving God with your song, but loving God with your life, doing the things that line up to the will of God, to the word of God, and to the promises of God that's upon your life. The word of God tells us that if you love me, obey my commandments. Do what I tell you to do. Don't tell me that you love me and you're doing everything that's the opposite. Amen. But the way that we show God that we love him is that we do according to what his word has done instructed us to do. Well, watch this. The word did not instruct us to be defeated. The word did not instruct us to be down and think that it's over. The word of God did not instruct us to be um, in a depressed state, in a stressed state. But he says that the joy of the Lord is our strength. Amen. It says to lift up your head, all ye gates, and be ye lifted up, for the King of glory shall come in. Lift up your head. Amen. Do not walk down Walk around with a head low, looking down, thinking it's over, amen, but that when people look at you, they can see that God is working some things out in your life, amen, that when people look at you, even though you're dealing with storms and situations in your life, that with a smile on your face, you say, well, am I being fake? No, you're not being F-A-K-E, you're being F-A-I-T-H, amen, you're not being fake, you're being faith. What does that mean? That even though I don't see the outcome, even though I don't see the results, even though I don't see the other end of this situation, my faith tells me that God is going to work it out. Well, how do I know that? Because God has never failed me yet. It's because of your faith, amen, that you have been able to get through the past situations in your life. Different storms, same God. Different situations, same God. Different financial storms, same God. Different chaotic family situation, but same God. We always point to the same God who has not changed. He is God yesterday, today, and forever, amen. So what God is trying to show you is, don't allow a different situation to think that God has changed because all things are still working together for your good. Watch this. To them who are 
the called according to his purpose. Amen. There's a purpose that God has upon your life. There's a purpose. There's a reason why you are here. There's a purpose that God has allowed you to experience the, some of the storms that you have experienced. So what you have to do is find the mess inside, find the message, I'm sorry, inside of your mess that you're in. You got to find the message that God has is trying to show to you to let you know that all things are working together. Yes, I'm going through some things, but it's working. Hallelujah. Yes, I'm experiencing some down days, but it's all working. Yes, I may have an ache and pain in my body, but it's all working. Amen. Yes, I may be dealing with a financial crisis in my life, but it's all working. No matter what you are going through, you may you got to press your way to that mindset and to that thought that all things are working together for my good. And that's where your testimony comes in at. So as I end this video, I encourage you today to not be defeated by your circumstance. Amen. If we all were defeated, then we wouldn't have anybody to encourage another. Amen. But let's all try to focus on what God has promised in our lives. Do not let the enemy make you think that what you're looking at is the end result. Amen. But I put a comma after that because it's like to be continued because God is still getting ready to birth something out of your life. He's birthing something out of your storm. He's birthing something out of your situation. He's birthing something out of your destructive state that you may think that you're in. Because that is the purpose of a testimony. You can't have a testimony unless you have been tested. Amen. And some of us are being tested in some areas of our lives where the Lord says you praise me and you shout and you dance on Sunday. But Monday through Saturday when you're experiencing the hell, when you're experiencing the heaviness of life, where is your praise? Where is your worship? And where is your word? Amen. So God bless each and every one of you. All things work together for the good. Amen. Man, God is doing good things in your life and he's doing good things in mine. And I want you to keep that word in your spirit in Romans chapter 8, verse 28. Matter of fact, read that whole chapter in its entirety and I want you to see what God is going to reveal. I better stop right there because brothers and sisters, you know me. When I get caught up in a moment, I'm telling you, we have church on this video. Amen. Please feel free to visit my website at www.mvogministries.com or my Facebook at Kevin Sanders. I love each and every one of you, and there's nothing that you can do about it. Go and tell your friends. Share this video. All things are working together for your good. You are not a loser, but you are a winner. God bless you.